Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, August 25th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Notre Dame game is in eight days, the game against Michigan in 92 days. The first college football games of the season are just one day away, which is even more exciting than uh, seven day, you know, eight days or 92 days. Uh, week zero kicks off on Saturday with a couple games involving Big Ten teams. We're going to be previewing those games today, as well as looking a uh, looking at some bigger picture stuff for the season. My guest is Tyler Shoemaker. He uh, may hold the record for the longest time between my first, hey, I need to have you on the show message, and then when we actually finally have him on. So, Tyler, number one, thank you for your patience, and number two, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Good to be here, Tom. I went back and looked. It was like, yeah, July 20-something. I was like, I need to have Tyler on to preview the season. It's like, mm, season's almost here. I better have Tyler on pretty soon. So, you know, I, the reason I wanted to talk to you was because you did something that I've thought for years would be a really cool, interesting project, and in which I haven't ever actually gotten around to doing which is you've created your own basically rating system for college football teams. So I guess let's start with how long ago did you get started with that? And then what made you want to try that? So I started just kind of recreationally betting uh, in 2017, 2016, 2017. And I'm just a naturally competitive person um, that just comes from, I was a basketball player when I was younger. I'm just extremely competitive. So it's like, okay, if I'm going to do this, and I'm going to spend every all day, every Saturday during college football season, you know, watching and, and having a vested interest, not only in Ohio, in Ohio State, but in the sport in general. I'm going to I want to be really good at it. So I every every year, you know, I, I add add different uh, complexities to the to the formula and, and just really, really get it uh, humming. And, and it's it's really enjoyable. I love it. I love sharing it with everyone. And it's it's been really fun to do and interact with people um, throughout the years. All right. So when you are adding those added complexities to the formula every year. What kinds of stuff are you actually looking at? What are you using to make your ranking system? I mean, I think everyone's familiar with the, you know, garbage in, garbage out kind of thing. So if you're putting in bad inputs, you're going to get bad ratings. What are you putting in to get good ratings? Yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, so, you know, a lot of people, w when they talk about stats, they're talking about total defense and, you know, how many points per game did you give up and that sort of thing. But that, I don't think that really tells the whole story. I'm I'm much more concerned with your efficiency and, and what you're doing on a on a play to play or drive to drive basis. And that, that, you know, is the, the gist of, of what I'm putting in is, is efficiency metrics. Um, it, you know, what, what you've done and who you've done it against are uh, the most important things. All right. So let's real quick, we'll, we'll do a quick side track to, uh, you know, yards per play and, and uh, you know, tempo free stats. Can you sort of briefly explain why, you know, why is, where are you, per play metrics? much more, you know, much more telling, I guess, rather than total game stats. What what makes a per play metric a better measurement for you? Yeah, because, you know, teams in the, in the NFL, it's it's much more based on parity and, and everyone is, is very similar. So opponent adjustment and tempo adjustment aren't as necessary. I, I still do them, but they're not as necessary. But in college football, there's such a broad spectrum of teams and styles. And, you know, Army, for instance, I think they average like 17 or 18 non-garbage possessions a game, um, you know, over the last few seasons. Whereas a team like Arkansas State, who's extremely fast tempo, they may be at 25 or 26. So trying to, to normalize that and get a standard uh, metric that, that we can measure two teams equally is, is extremely important in college football. One of the other things that you have to account for is right now is transfers. I mean, the you know this. I think since 2017, the landscape around college football has changed quite a bit. When and you know when you're 12 weeks into the season, you've probably accounted for all of that kind of stuff. But you know, we're going to talk in a few minutes about schools where there's a big gap between the number you know from uh, you know like overall over under over under win totals, for example, for certain teams. Your system has one number. The over under number for other teams is you know, pretty significantly different. And one of those is USC. So that's a school this year that has basically totally rebuilt their roster, new coaching staff, something like 20 transfers. I mean, just crazy. I mean, crazy total overhaul. How difficult is it for you at this time of year before any of those guys have stepped on the field to account for changes like that? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult. And I'd be lying if I said I had a, you know, perfect system for that uh, mapped out, you know, because of the transfer portal, you know, has been around for a few years now, but I feel like each year it becomes more and more of a factor as, you know, some teams are, are relying on that so heavily in how they're building their rosters. Um, so, I mean, the only things we can look at are what, what those players recruiting rankings were uh, as well as if they have any prior production, you know, at their previous school, like a Caleb Williams, for instance, you know, he played the second, you know, started the second half of the season for Oklahoma last year. So there, there's at least some, 
kind of um, quantitative data out there that that we can use. But again, it's it's imperfect, and um, that's why I'm curious to see teams like like USC, teams like Texas that that have have been heavy in the portal. Um, Michigan State's done a good job of that. So I, I am curious, and and like I said, I'll be the first one to admit that I I don't have a hundred percent handle on that. This is kind of the time of year when you often hear people talking about the fact that, you know, the biggest opportunities against the spread come early in the season because, you know, week eight, week nine, you generally have a sense for what teams really are at that point and, you know, injuries and who's out and who's in and all that kind of stuff. Is that something you found to be true that the real opportunities against the spread come, you know, week zero, week one before people have figured it out, before you've probably totally figured it out, but also before Vegas has figured it out? There's certainly opportunity there. I, I don't know that I would go as far as to say that, you know, I make most of my hay the first three or four weeks of the season because as the season progresses and teams get out of their non-conference play and into their conference play, you know, tempos um, kind of begin begin to adjust and teams are playing, in theory, better competition. You know, Ohio State playing against Michigan or Wisconsin is is more difficult than Ohio State playing against Toledo or, or Arkansas State. So, um I wouldn't say that there's more opportunity, but there certainly is opportunity. You know, if you know the metrics to to really look at and, and focus on, I think there is opportunity early in the season to to take advantage. I know, I know, I've seen some data guys that do you know similar models to myself. They they've made the comment that you know they they don't even want to bet anything, or they'll bet like half a unit the first few weeks of the season until they have a better handle. But I I kind of just jump you know jump headfirst into the deep end and and take my chance. So when you were jumping headfirst in the next week or two, what are some of the biggest gaps that you've sort of identified between what your numbers say and maybe some of the lines for games either this weekend, next weekend? I know I saw you tweet on uh, Thursday morning or th- Wednesday night, one or the other, that, that you know there was some real significant movement in some of those lines. So wh- what are some of the games that you're kind of looking at from that perspective? Yeah, definitely. The lines, you know, as, as we get closer to game time, because, you know, 90 percent of the betting population bets the week of the game and then a lot of people bet the day of the game which to me you you have the propensity to lose some value when you wait that long so i i that's why i've been trying to get my bets in early tweet them out so people can can get in and and really understand the importance of getting the best number um so i some bets that i've made so far uh for for week one or or week zero uh i've got a cincinnati plus seven against arkansas state and that line's already um, dipping down to six and a half or six. Um, Boise State plus three against uh, Oregon State. Uh, and USC, again, a, a team a team that we talked about, I, I'm i going to nibble on Rice plus 35 against them and also the under in that game. Um, one, because Rice is awful and I don't think they're going to be able to score enough. Even, even if USC proves me wrong and they're, they're excellent offensively, I, I still... Don't know that Rice can hold up their end of the bargain there. Um, so that that's a few that I like. Uh, in terms of Week Zero specifically for this weekend, uh, there's nothing that I that I love. I may just put a few bucks down for for recreational value on Hawaii uh, against Vanderbilt. I'm I'm kind of holding off to see that line has already moved substantially. It, it's up to uh, Vanderbilt minus eight and a half. We'll see if that gets closer to ten. I, I definitely will take it at Hawaii plus ten, but I may. May end up getting um, Hawaii eight and a half or nine anyway, just just to have some entertainment value. Speaking of teams with a lot of turnover and a new coach this year, Hawaii is on that list as well. Uh, Tony Gerderman and I actually talked about them a little bit on the uh, Thursday episode of Buckeye Weekly that dropped uh, yesterday, so you can check that out as well. Um, you know, you make all this, all of this data, at least most of this data, available publicly, and I will put a link to your spreadsheet. You just got a Google sheet, and it, you, I will put a link to that spreadsheet in the post for the show on the front page of BuckeyeHuddle.com. One thing that you've got, one of the tabs there that I thought was really interesting was you've got, you win projections for the season. Now, you've got the Buckeyes, your, number ha- Buckeyes have the, your numbers have the Buckeyes close to 80% or better to win every game on their schedule. I think the, the lowest percentage was 79 point something at Penn State. Everything else was above 80%. And, you know, there, there was the Arkansas State game. They were 99.92%. So, you know, outside of a meteor strike or a uh, bus breakdown or something like that, they're probably winning the Arkansas State game. But you know, on the whole, those are incredibly high numbers, better than 80% to win all of your games. However, it you, it all adds up to them winning only 11 games. So, the, you know, the projection is they will go 11 and 1. So as someone who has been uh, the bad guy on the beat, who has p- picked Ohio State to lose a game every year in the beat writer poll, um, you know, there was 2020, I was the only one to pick them to lose a game because it's just like, 
I can't tell you which game they're going to lose, but odds are they're going to lose a game. So I'm going to let you be the bad guy this time. Can you explain how, if they're 80% plus likely to win all their games, how are they going to lose a game? How, how does how does the numbers work out to make that uh, make that play out that way? Yeah, so I'll be the bad guy for you here. And so my, my numbers have Ohio State winning uh, right at 11 games. Um, and that's just the way statistics work. You know, if you have an 80% chance to win each week, that that's not you winning one game each week. That's when that's you winning eighty percent of a game each week. So just the way it adds up over the course of the season comes out to Ohio State winning uh, about eleven games. So statistically, they're likely to drop one. But when you actually look game by game, I do like you said. I do have them at twelve. What I call likely wins, which is a sixty percent or better um, win probability. So everybody can breathe easy. It should be, should be a great season in Columbus, but yeah, statistically speaking, they, they are likely to drop a game at some point. Uh, this week is week zero. You mentioned earlier, you know, maybe you're playing the Vanderbilt Hawaii game. Are there any games that, uh, as you're sitting on the couch, you're interested just from a, you know, for this weekend, I guess, which is the most interesting game for you? Not from a, you know, betting perspective necessarily, but just from a college football, what, what are you most interested to watch this weekend? Yeah, and I think I think this will be a pretty popular answer. But I, the Nebraska Northwestern game uh, is interesting to me for for a couple of reasons. I mean, Nebraska, as has been you know really popularly discussed as you know maybe it was the best three win team of all time last year, uh, playing against Northwestern, who's kind of had this roller coaster you know of of seasons the last few seasons. Uh, Scott Frost may be on his last leg at Nebraska. Uh, if, if this if he doesn't get it done this year, you know is he still the guy there? We'll see. Uh, versus, you know, Pat Fitzgerald, who's done a great job with with the talent that he's had at, at Northwestern. But again, they, you know, they had a terrible year last year, and and history says after a terrible year, he has a great year. So uh, I, I am interested to see that just um, that coaching battle, and to see those two teams who are in a Big Ten West that's that's pretty wide open. So I, I think there's a lot of implications in that game. Yeah, and and you add in the uh, flying to Ireland and the weird body clock stuff, and they, you know, talking to Scott Frost at Big Ten Media Days, he thought they had figured that out. He they were going to go a bunch of days early, and he didn't think that would be an issue. And they had studied all the sleep pattern stuff and all that kind of stuff. Still, anytime you go overseas, weird stuff can happen. So yes, that's uh, that is definitely the one that I'm uh, most interested in watching this weekend as well. Uh, you also, in addition to being a uh, you know something of a, a uh, pro uh, handicapper and uh, statistical expert. You are also a member of BuckeyeHuddle.com. You've been talking about a lot of your numbers on the insiders board there, uh, on the uh, on the huddle board. So, um, you know, earlier I let you be the bad guy to tell everyone why it was there was a decent possibility Ohio State was going to lose. Now I'm going to let you be the good guy to tell everyone you can do the, you can do the sales pitch this time. You, you know, why did you decide you want to be a member of the uh, Buckeye Huddle community and uh, how are you enjoying things there so far? Yeah, Buckeye Huddle's been been great. I would definitely encourage everyone to uh, sign up there and, and join the board. It's it's been been great. And you know, I joined because you know I, I've only always listened to to this this podcast, your you know your morning show and your Buckeye Weekly with Tony. I, I think you guys are great. Uh, and then you get you know the recruiting coverage with Alex and Mark, and uh, then you know Ross and the guys doing the X's and O's coverage. I, I think it's it's a really complete crew and i i really enjoy my my interactions with with all of you well uh we have uh, i think people are enjoying their interactions with you on the board as well you you're you have been a very popular part of the uh the betting thread there and you put your numbers out there and a lot of uh, interesting conversations about those um so you can you can find tyler on the uh on the huddle board at buckeyehuddle.com but uh if people want to find you on twitter where can they do that yep definitely i would encourage everyone to, to follow me on twitter at Buckeye tie 23 uh, tweet out all of my picks, you know, any, any type of nuggets that I find interesting that, that can help everyone be more successful, better is uh, just more knowledgeable about, about sports betting as it becomes, you know, legal in more States and more people start to do it. You know, I don't want anyone to, to waste their money. So I, I try to help out uh, the best I can. Yeah. I think sports gambling on track to be legal in Ohio on uh, January 1st, last I heard. So uh, if Ohio state's in the college football playoff semifinals, you might have to go to Wheeling Island or something to put some money down on that one. It'll be, you'll miss it by a day, but uh, if they're in the national championship game and they might be, seems like they might be this year, uh, you might be able to bet legally on that in the state of Ohio too. Won't that, uh, won't that add a whole fun new dynamic to uh, the angst around Ohio state football uh, in the internet and uh, all around the state on the whole. Uh, you can, uh, if you want to be part of the uh, this fun Ohio State season, do what Tyler did, join BuckeyeHuddle.com. Really fantastic community, as he said. Recruiting coverage, X's and O's coverage, team coverage, 
all sorts of great stuff. Really, really fun and active community. They were there as well on the uh, the huddle board. Um, members only, so you got to sign up today. We are eight days away from the first game, so feels like it's probably going to be a pretty interesting week leading up to Notre Dame. Feels like you're probably going to be sitting at the office going, I wish it was Saturday. Why isn't it Saturday already? Wait, can, can I talk football with someone? Well, you can, but you got to sign up at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.